Okay. Um, <clears throat> so today we are going to talk about uh, network connectivity in a hybrid cloud uh, use case. And uh, I'm Vinit Jain. Uh, these are my colleagues, John Kaspersky and Nikhil Gupta. Uh, I'll uh, start off uh, uh, playing the uh, with the introduction and uh, describing the big picture. John will then describe the network connectivity in detail. And uh, uh, depending on how, uh, how, how much time is left, we'll have Nickel cover uh, an aspect of Keystone as well, because uh, these, when we uh, uh, did this hybrid cloud, there were some key aspects uh, that we also had to uh, take into consideration uh, for Keystone, uh, to share the Keystone. So, uh, Hybrid cloud, uh, I mean, this is, uh, uh, is the ability to consume uh, uh, and interconnect and orchestrate uh, across uh, different types of cloud and also traditional IT. Right, and and uh, we have, uh, throughout uh, the m multiple sessions, we have seen, uh, right, I mean, why this is uh, important and uh, where uh, you can uh, have your workloads uh, uh, take the best fit uh, infrastructure achieve the right balance of uh, risk and uh, uh, speed and so forth. Uh, and, and various surveys, right, project uh, at, at different time, points in, in time in the future where uh, how hybrid clouds will get adopted. One particular data point is uh, from uh, Gartner where they said uh, by 2017, uh, half the enterprises will be uh, using full-blown hybrid clouds. So this is obviously an important use case. Uh, so, uh, diving into the hybrid cloud architecture, we uh, uh, support uh, where uh, we basically, uh, this is a hybrid cloud between two OpenStack regions, uh, where uh, on the left here is a on-prem, uh, uh, on the left is the off-prem uh, region, which is uh, basically hosted on our, in our software data centers. Uh, it is uh, based on our uh, IBM Cloud OpenStack services uh, managed private cloud uh, that we offer. And on the right is uh, in the customer data centers. It is a product we offer uh, which makes uh, deployment of OpenStack easy. Uh, it's, called, it's called IBM Cloud Manager. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the key aspects of the use case are that uh, it uh, basically consists of two uh, regions. Uh, the on-prem and the off-prem are two different regions. Uh, these two are uh, basically connected securely, uh, and then they share a common Keystone service uh, and and use a common uh, and can use a common Horizon portal to manage the two regions. And uh, the deployed VMs have visibility and and can communicate across the two regions. So this is the case where you have you can have a tiers here of your application deployed across the two regions. And uh, so uh, let, let me describe a little bit about the two uh, uh, stacks that we have in the two regions. First, uh, describing the off-prem uh, uh, offering that we have. This is basically, we refer to it as OpenStack dedicated. It's uh, basically uh, uh, manage private cloud of, uh, open, uh, based on OpenStack. It is uh, deployed, uh, it's a turnkey solution. It is deployed per, per client uh, based on uh, using uh, dedicated uh, infrastructure. So it is, uh, does not share compute servers or storage. We build it out of the dedicated uh, 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 hardware. And uh, it is OpenStack based and therefore you get uh, the op access to the OpenStack APIs and, uh, and the Horizon Cloud Management. Uh, and uh, and if it, it is set up based on the initial size that uh, the clients request us for, and then uh, it's a monthly subscription model, right? I mean, they get billed monthly for it as long as they need it for. And, and of course, they can grow or shrink it based on, on the requirements. Uh, and, uh, so, and, and then this is a managed cloud. This is an off-prem managed cloud. So clients consume this cloud. IBM manages the, the OpenStack, the network gateways, the security, uh, the hardware, uh, right? I mean, all, all the storage, all, all those things is, are things that we keep running we, and we provide the SLA. And, uh, and of course, uh, support 24-7. Uh, a uh, little bit about, about what is under the hood in this environment uh, is uh, basically today we are uh, based on Juno. Uh, and uh, 
uh, as I said, it comes with the Horizon Web Console. Uh, the hypervisor is KVM. Uh, and, uh, and we do provide a virtualized network in this environment, uh, which is basically allows you to create uh, and delete uh, networks and routers and, and sort of policies using Neutron APIs. Uh, there is a load balancer as a service that comes, uh, is, is offered uh, as part of this cloud. Uh, the storage is uh, based on Ceph, uh, which is uh, and it's a storage cluster uh, dedicated for this cloud. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, right, I mean, using the Glance uh, services, you can bring your own images and licenses. Uh, typically, corporations would have uh, their own license agreements with uh, their favorite uh, uh, OS provider, and they bring their own license. And, uh, and of course, you get Keystone and Celometer uh, right, I mean, to uh, do user management and uh, any kind of chargeback in this environment. So this is what is our uh, off-prem environment in this particular use case. Uh, and then a little bit about our uh, on, uh, on the customer's on-prem environment, which is uh, in their data center. Uh, this is uh, deployed using uh, uh, IBM Cloud Manager, which uh, is basically a software that uh, we offer. And uh, using this uh, piece of software, one can uh, pretty quickly get their OpenStack running in their data center and, and get the uh, usual uh, things that one looks for in a cloud, like uh, self-service uh, provisioning of VMs, uh, usage metering, uh, OpenStack APIs. The one other thing that we also offer here is uh, beyond uh, the x86 support, we also offer uh, for, uh, support for other hypervisors that uh, IBM offers. And, uh, and then we have some optimizations for uh, VM placement and, and so forth. And of course, this is a supported product, so uh, right, should you run into problems using it, it is supported. And uh, so what's included in this uh, software package? It, it comes with a Chef server uh, that uh, is uh, used to automate the installation. And, uh, and then it comes with flexible, it allows you to, uh, a lot of flexibility in terms of the topologies that you can install. And uh, so uh, the way it works is uh, initially you, you install your uh, Chef deployment server and from there then uh, it uh, takes over and uh, depending on the topologies uh, you want and the configuration from, from very simple ones to uh, large uh, and, and multi-region configurations. So, uh, so all of those uh, are possible using this. And uh, so, so now we have covered, right, I mean, what is our, uh, in, in, the, in this hybrid uh, use case, uh, the off-prem, how we get to the off-prem uh, cloud and the on-prem cloud. And uh, now let's take a look at uh, what does, uh, what, do, what do we mean by this hybrid cloud, right? So uh, there are two uh, OpenStack regions, right, that, uh, we, uh, we're set up using the respective methods that I described. Uh, in this case, uh, we, we do uh, provide a shared Keystone, but uh, right, going forward as, as Keystone Federation uh, is, is available, right, that is also uh, one of the uh, use cases uh, to look at. Uh, and then uh, op uh, the on-prem horizon can be used to manage both the regions. Uh, so you, you can just select which region you want to operate in, and uh, uh, it'll, uh, you can do the operation that way. Uh, VMs in each region can communicate with, uh, as part of this hybrid uh, cloud, uh, VMs in each region can talk to each other. Right? So this is the case where applications are split, uh, can be deployed in a split manner, or, or you can uh, even uh, uh, move it uh, between regions. Uh, and the VPNs uh, can be route-based or, or policy-based, uh, and they're basically IPsec site-to-site -site VPNs. And uh, in, in our particular example, we used Viada-based gateways, but it, it, the, these concepts uh, should, should apply to any kind of uh, standard VPN device. So with that, uh, I'll uh, hand it over to John, who will get into more details on how we establish the network connectivity. Okay, thank you. Uh, the network connectivity that we have in the hybrid cloud scenario here, we have network connectivity for two items. Uh, one, we want the region-to-region -region network connectivity between region one and region two. 
obviously. And we also want VM to VM connectivity so that VMs deployed in Region 1 be able to communicate with VMs deployed in Region 2. We want VM to VM connectivity. Here's a more uh, detailed chart showing the two regions. Um, in this example, we have just a single controller and a single compute shown, but you could have multiple controllers, a high availability scenario, multiple compute nodes. But for simplicity's sake, we say let's just show a single one here. Um, we have a single VM shown on each side, VM1, VM2, and this is what we want to get communicating back and forth together. On the left side, we have a red private network on the off-site region, and on the right, we have a, there's a yellow GRE network. Uh, the GRE network, what we're actually going to communicate with is the floating IP address that's signed to VM2. We're not going to talk directly to the IP address that's behind that floating IP. If you look down on the chart a little bit, we have the VPN connection set up between the two systems. Uh, there's an IPsec VPN, and there's two public IP addresses on both sides of this connection. Uh, for uh, the sake of this presentation, we use 22, or 23, 23, 23, 23, and then 24. 24, 24, 24 is the two public IP addresses, but obviously you wouldn't be using those IP addresses and such. Uh, beneath that is the virtual tunnel interface. There are two additional addresses that run the tunnel between the two endpoints. Uh, finally, the last thing on this chart that I'd like to point out is the um, bottom left and the bottom right uh, routing information. Uh, just setting up the VPN between the two sites isn't enough. You also have to set up routing tables so that um, the, if you run a shared Keystone environment like we were doing here, you want to be able to controller on your on-premise site to be able to access the shared Keystone on the off-premise. So you need to update the routing tables to allow that to happen. Uh, you also need to update routing tables so that the VM1 can talk to VM2 and you have connectivity between those two VM uh, deployed networks. There are five steps, basically, through this pitch that we'll talk about to get this set up. Uh, you got to install OpenStack on the off-premise. You got to configure the VPN on the on-premise and off-premise so they can communicate the network. Set up the routing tables and configuration for the routing. Install OpenStack on the on-premise. And then configure Neutron Security Groups, because by default, your Neutron Security Groups will block the incoming traffic. Uh, we're not going to talk about step one or step four here. We assume that you can install OpenStack however it means you want to install it. And we're just going to focus on items two, three, and five. First off, a uh, slight disclaimer on configuring the VPN setup. Um, there's some steps in here we'll talk about what needs to be done. But the steps here, we're using public IP addresses between the two endpoints. And your public IP address if you go back to your company and try and do this, you may have uh, firewall rules and security settings in your environment that prevent you from using a public IP address in your environment. You will have to work with your network administrators and your companies to allow that and figure out what's the best way to get through that. So you're, you're not going to take these instructions as is and go back and implement them. Uh, bottom half of this chart, uh, there's two sections here. One is information you'll need to provide to the off-premise site that information about your how send the VPN, information they need to provide to you so you can set the VPN correctly. Uh, we're going to go through those more in detail on the next page. On this chart, there's a whole set of values on the far left side, all highlighted there. This is sort of a prereq stuff. Before you even think about doing the VPN, gather this information, make sure you figure out all this information is so that you can set up the VPN correctly. Uh, the first four items here are deal with the off-premise side. Uh, you need to know the public IP address for that gateway. You need to know what virtual tunnel interface the gateway is going to be using. You need to know the IP address that OpenStack is going to be running on the off-premise so you can figure, in our case, a shared keystone between the two. You need to know what private networks are being supported by the off-premise side so you can set the routing tables correctly to get to those off-premise networks. Uh, setting up the VPN requires a shared secret between the two networks. Uh, our shared secret in this case is secret. It was very complex. Uh, on the on-premise side, you have a public IP address. You have your private network that you're going to be handling, that you're going to be providing to the off-premise side. You have subnets you're going to be routing to. And the very last statement there says valid gateway. 
the examples we have in this page and a couple of pages after this um, are exactly the Viata statements you'll need to run on a Viata gateway to configure this stuff. Um, if you're not running Viata, the instructions here are still useful because they have like a blueprint of what you need to do. You still need to create the virtual tunnel for race in step one. You still need to set up the VPN. So if you follow these as basic steps when it gets done and apply that to whatever commands are appropriate for whatever uh, provider for the gateway device you have. Look at the right side, step one, creating the virtual tunnel interface. You need to have the tunnel set up and then basically you specify what interface you're gonna have and what your local tunnel side is gonna be. Step two, uh, setting up the VPN, the basics for the VPN. You have internet key exchange, you have encapsulation, encapsulating security protocol. And these settings need to be set up and configured in advance. Um, they need to be consistent with whatever your off-premise is going to be using. You have to be handshake with them, coordinate with them, what you're going to use, make sure they're consistent between the two. Step three is finally configuring the VPN itself, configure the site-to-site -site connection. You need to know your public IP address, their public IP address, set that up, set the internet key exchange, set the encapsulating security protocols, set the secret you're going to use, set the virtual tunnel interface. All the commands to do that for the Viata are listed here. And if you Google for other platforms, you can see the commands they have. They're not going to be exactly like this, but the same type of steps will need to be done. Once all the steps are done, one through four, and you've saved the configuration, you'll have your local VPN set up, all, your local VN, VPN gateway all set up. But you're only half done at that point. You still got to set up the off-premise side. When dealing with the off-premise, typically you don't have access to go in and modify the gateway configuration of an off-premise site because that's how you're reaching the off-premise. They're not going to allow you to go in and start changing things on them. So you have to work with that off-premise organization to set the appropriate parameters. They'll be working with them throughout this to set the internal settings and make sure they're consistent, but you have to set work with them as well. Um, some of the values need to set are listed in the middle there. Uh, some of the on-premise stuff you'll need to provide to them so they can set, make sure they're consistent. Uh, one thing I will point out, sort of a plug for what was mentioned earlier, the IBM Cloud OpenStack Services, as was mentioned earlier in the pitch, allows you to automatically configure that off-premise gateway using Horizon. They have a Horizon plug-in that automatically configures their Viata gateway under the covers. And there's a screenshot here that's only two panels that you really go through. One, you define the virtual tunnel interface, specify the IP address at the very bottom right here. And on the second panel, you can go through and define the IPsec connection. Specify uh, what's your peer addresses for their public IP addresses, what's the internet key exchange, the encapsulating security protocol. All this stuff can be done just through a Verizon plugin, or Horizon plugin. Um, once you have the VPN set up, configured, either through IBM's way or through whatever method you're doing with the offset, whatever your off-premise is. You then need to think about the routing information. You have two regions. You have IP addresses in both regions. You need to build a route information <coughs> between the two. There are two steps for the routing. First, uh, step one here, you need to set up a route to the OpenStack that's running on the off-premise site. Um, you want to do a shared keystone environment. Well, you need to specify, how do I get to that shared keystone? Where is that located? So you need to set a host route up on your private gateway that says, okay, in order to reach that destination IP address, I need to go across this virtual tunnel information, and they know how to reach that IP address. So you need to set up some default route, or a, a host route for that case. The second item here is setting up connectivity for the virtual machine to virtual machine communication. You've got to set up routing to allow that to happen as well. Here we're setting up a subnet route on that private gateway that says, okay, in order to reach the VM machine one that's deployed over on the off-premise, send it through this route here, which just routes it through the virtual tunnel interface and out to the other side. Steps four, five, six at the bottom here deal with setting up the um, routes on your controller and your compute nodes that you have locally. This step may or may not be needed depending upon how your controller compute nodes are actually deployed. If you have your control and compute nodes set up with a default route that, are like, that routes all of their traffic back to their private gateway, 
and then all the traffic's already going to be sent to there, and there's no need to redirect the route someplace else. But if they have multiple interfaces and they have default route out a different public interface or someplace else, then you'll need to specify routes as listed in 4 and 5 here to make sure that the routes go to your virtual private interface and then out the virtual, out the virtual tunnel, tunnel interface and out to the, uh, out to the off-premise side. So steps 4 and 5 here are optional depending on what your setup really is. Um, again, I'll note that the statements under 1, 2, 4, and 5 here, these are the actual Viata commands that you'll do to set these routes, actually on under 1 and 2, and they'll be different on your environment. Once you have the routes set up, the next thing you want to do is probably test them to actually see if they work, and are you able to get to the off-premise location. Um, obvious thing to use, use ping. Um, but sometimes the off-premise site might not allow ping operation to work. They may have rules in place that block ICMP traffic. Um, if you're communicating with a soft layer site, uh, which we're doing here, they disable ping traffic. You cannot ping their destination. So we had to rely on the second item under option one there using curl command, connecting to the HTTP site, uh, connecting to the Horizon website and getting an HTTP response back. If You've got this all set up, and you think everything's supposed to be working, your VPN's up, and everything's, but you're not getting a response back from the ping, you're not getting a response back from an HTTP request. Um, in order to debug this, looking at TCP dump output going out that virtual tunnel is probably the first place to start. You'd want to look to see, are your packets actually being sent across the tunnel to the off-premise side? Uh, if you're not getting any data out the tunnel, then there's probably something wrong with the routing setup locally that you're not passing the data out that tunnel. Um, and you want to look back at that. If you are getting data out the tunnel, but you're not getting responses back, then chances are on the off-premise side that they have some firewalls in place that are preventing the responses getting back to you. So you want to work at the off-premise side to figure, okay, why aren't they sending responses back? But again, the first step in all this is making sure you have VPN connection set up correctly that we did earlier. Once we have the routing set up, once we have the VPN connection set up, we install OpenStack on the on-premise side. We set the shared keystone. Everything's working fine. We deploy a VM. We want to get connectivity to the VM. But we still don't have connectivity yet. Um, one common issue in that case is the neutron security groups. Um, when you deploy something, the neutron security groups, by default, will block all traffic to that deployed VM unless you're running another VM that's deployed as well on that same region, the same subnet. And there are um, the dis subnet, the security rules need to be updated in order to allow incoming traffic to that deployed VM. Uh, the default security groups can be updated using um, the Neutron CLI commands, and there's two links at the bottom of the page here. Uh, they can also be updated using the Horizon uh, self. Horizon has some plugins and some examples of how to update the security rules with Horizon. Um, I tend to like the UI is a little bit easier, more easy to understand. So here's a couple screenshots of how you do it in Horizon. Uh, didn't show up too well. Um, you go into the access and security section under the compute section. Uh, in Horizon, you have the options on the left side. Uh, Setting security groups, you don't go through network, you go actually go through compute. Under compute, access security is set the security groups. Pull up the uh, default security group, you manage the rules, and there's four rules that they list by default. There are two inbound rules, two outbound rules. One's for IP4 traffic, one's for IPv6 traffic. If you look at the very first rule there, that's a little hard to read, but it says allow all inbound IP4 traffic that's from any IP protocol on any port, which, hey, that should work, except for there's a statement section at the very end that says only do it for the security group is default, which means only do it if you've deployed with this security group can come in. Since we have a region that's, we have two regions here, one's off-premise, anything that's coming in from the off-site region wasn't deployed with the security group, so all their traffic's gonna be rejected. And that's why we need to add additional rule for ICMP traffic, for SSH traffic, whatever traffic you wanna allow into your deployed VMs, 
need to allow that on both sides so they can communicate. Once that's done, you should have connectivity between the two VMs and be able to ping SSH or whatever you want to do between the VMs. And that's network connectivity in quick swipe. Next stop, shared keystone. Thank you, John. Yep, thank you. Um, so in this environment, we had, since we had a shared keystone, we had to do some tricks to make sure the on-prem um, key um, OpenStack Cloud could share the keystone with the with the off-premise. And since the off-premise also had different sets of roles and permissions, uh, since it was managed, there were set set of roles that only an admin could use, which were not available to the customer. So we had to come up with uh, changes to um, access roles on the on the on the off-premise cloud uh, so that we could allow the on-premises on-premise cloud users to access it uh, correctly so so the the basically the use case was that the on-premise admin users would not have an admin role in the in the managed cloud uh, so so we ended up creating uh, a new role for the on-premise admins in the keystone, in the shared keystone. Um, and, and similarly for the on-premise service users, we added new roles in there. Now what that allowed us to do in the OpenStack dashboard, um, as you can see, if you selected region uh, three, which is the, if you're logged in as the admin on-prem and you selected region three, which was the on on premise cloud you got you got to see the admin role for yourself so it's shown in the top uh, picture there but if you logged in as uh, if you switched over to region 1 the then the admin tab disappeared so you didn't have access to the admin uh, role in the in the managed cloud so that was one of the requirements and that's how we did that um, now, these are a um, bunch of commands that we ran in Keystone to set that up. So the first one, so, so the first one is setting, is creating all the on-premise users in the managed cloud Keystone, since it's a shared Keystone. Um, and then the second command there, which is creating the admin and service tenants for the uh, for the on-prem cloud, so so we kind of separate the users and the services based on uh, uh, where they were coming from, and we also added in the different roles. So the third command there, create on-prem roles, is creating roles for the different on-prem users, and then we assigned the roles to those users, um, and then ended up creating endpoints. Um, in Keystone for the on-prem regions. And that allowed us to um, access both the regions from a single horizon dashboard. So that, is, that was all the changes to Keystone um, that we had to do. Thank you. And, and we had to use this Keystone because the Federation wasn't yeah, available at, at that at point. At that point, the Federation wasn't developed. There was no web SSO between um, in horizon available at that time. So we ended up going the shared keystone way. With Federation, you still would follow the same network connectivity model, but uh, you can try out Federation. Yeah. Right. And then you don't need to create all those roles and others, so the two keystones would be sub distinct from each other. Thank you. Questions? <coughs> Any questions? Can you speak in the microphone there, or? So for the uh, VM to VM connectivity, you're assuming that all the VMs are going to pick up a floating IP pool to talk to uh, uh, yes. the other side of it, right? Yeah, we're communicating to the floating IP address in this case, or you're running a flat network or some network that's actually like a provider network where you can actually get access to the VM directly. But yeah, we're assuming flowing IPs. Okay, and uh, 
uh, the inter uh, cloud connectivity. So you have a blanket rule open for all the floating IP pools. Uh, that's how it's uh, it's going over the IPsec VPN tunnel. Yes, the the communication with that floating pool is being sent over that tunnel interface. Okay. Um, so you used VPNs. Um, you know, across, you couldn't, uh, did you try to, or did you think about using, or is it over VXLAN tunnels, or uh, uh, given that VXLAN so, so runs over um, layer three? Yeah, so we used VPNs because, right, these were two separate regions, right, separate cl cloud regions, right, and, and uh, in this particular use case, as a matter of uh, offering, right, we provide VPN connectivity, right, uh, regardless of whatever the other side is, right? I mean, there is no dependency in this case. Uh, like in, in this example, the other side was using GRE tunneling. And, uh, and uh, on the off-prem, we were using uh, virtualized networking uh, based on SDNVE, which is uh, a sort of VXLAN tunneling. So, uh, so in this case, we, we didn't create any dip, uh, assumptions on uh, dependencies on what the clouds are running as far as networking is concerned, right? I see. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Um, here, as we have single keystone, um, all the off-site uh, services and users have to authenticate and travel over the VPN. Have you done any performance uh, benchmark or bit like what's the performance impact? between off-premise and on-premise, uh, maybe authentication, you know, VM creation, or any other open stack operation? So um, it, it does, uh, the latency does come into the picture because, uh, right, I mean, those uh, uh, flows have to uh, go to Keystone, right, during the API calls. Uh, one way around this is to, uh, to move to those uh, PKI to tokens, right? So, so yeah, new things is use PKI tokens, then that don't need that many interactions with Keystone. So <laughs> we, we, we haven't worked with PKI tokens so far, um, and there are problems with PKI tokens themselves, so we'll probably think about using Federation. I think that would be the route we'll go, but we haven't, have we done any performance uh, uh, test we, on this? We, we didn't formally do a benchmark or, or measurements, but what we found was, right, it, it, from a usability perspective, it wasn't. Uh, it was acceptable. It was, yeah, it's acceptable. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions from audience? Um, dynamic routing probably would have been easier. Um, for this case, we were trying to get up and running and we went with static routes. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, endpoints to worry about there. We did the one host route, the one subnet route, and that was enough. So uh, for a more complicated case, uh, dynamic routing probably would have been a better choice. Also, I think that two organizations would have to agree to dynamic routing in that case. Right? That's Yeah, that would be an extension. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you for you. your time.